Hello everyone, my name is Kimona Sotirkos and I'm one of the tech leads of the Notebooks Working Group. And today I'm really excited to make you a complete tour of what's going to be new for Kubeflow 1.3. I'm not really gonna dive too deep into the technical details, but I'm more likely going to show you a high foot overview of what's changed and what you should be excited about and how Kubeflow 1.3 is going to look like. So without further ado, this is a first look of how Kubeflow is going to be. But before jumping into the different sections and the UIs that are exposed right there, I'd also like to first talk about the updated manifests that Yanis from the node from the manifest working group has put a lot of work in and has really refined how we can install Kubeflow. And the main idea is that everything is going to be customized components. So you can either pick, pick and choose different components and install them, or there is even one single command with just some example stack of different components you can use to just install and get running with Kubeflow. Or you could customize your installation as much as you want by setting up your individual components and what you want to include. So for my, I'm using a mini KF and I've actually run this command to bring up everything up to speed. And this is how it's going to look. So the first thing that we noticed from the previous releases is the fact that there are a lot of more new entries in the dashboard. And this is something that we've worked for 1.3 to make it easier for people and expose all of the underlying objects and functionalities that they can use with Kubeflow to make it more clear what are the options they have? So I'll start with notebooks since it's under the work group I'm mostly aff affiliated with. For one of the most important features for 1.3 is the fact that we've now added support for more uh, for more notebook servers and IDs. So you can now select Visual Studio Code images and R Studio. And this will allow people to actually run even R and use their favorite Visual Studio code. Next up, we've also worked with implementing TensorBoard support as the first class citizen of Kubeflow. TensorBoard now has its own CRD, although it's still in alpha, but it's a nice decoupling of having to run TensorBoard from the notebooks. And you can even run it along and monitor a notebook or a pipeline experiment. Next, we've also introduced a new, brand new UI for managing PVCs on top of Kubeflow. And this will come in handy with managing notebooks, since now you can very easily keep and uh, track which volumes actually live in your cluster and edit them. And the next item that we see in the dashboard is the experiments for the auto ML. And this is actually one of the new features that we worked for 1.3, and it's a new UI for AutoML as well. Although this is not set by default, but I just turned it on in my mini KFs just so I can show you around. It comes along with the same philosophies as the previous UIs I just showed you, and it will allow you to select your experiments and vi visualize how they perform, the, it's the status, its details, trials, etc. And you can also see the details and YAML, and we're really working on reiterating and iterating on this UI. And also for AutoML, there was a lot of more effort going on for specific algorithms like how to do neural architecture, architecture search, early stopping, and all of these goodies. So don't forget to check them out as well. Now for KFP, we have one of the most important changes that, that happened is that we've destructured the pages of KFP and integrated them more with the central dashboard, which will improve the user experience and make Kubeflow look more like a whole platform. And everyone can see all of the different features that, that were living inside a single component. And aside from just some UI changes, there are also some really nice security features that got implemented. And the most important one is the fact that from now on, users can do author, the KFP client now supports authorization checks by using service account tokens. And the KFP server can actually 
use authorization checks by performing subject access reviews to check if a user, if a, the client has a permission to do what it wants to do. And now we can also talk also for 1.9, this is not directly linked to pipelines, but for the entirety of Qflow, we have Qflow 1.9, which really is an upgrade for people to use. And one of the most important, which comes with a lot of both security fixes and newest features, to name one, people can use authorization policies to configure which services in the cluster can talk with which other ones. So you can configure a notebook living in just one namespace. You can configure it to not have access to any other to any other pods in the namespace, and more more finely define what you want to do with your network. And with this, the last let me talk about the last but not least component, which is KF Serving. KF Serving does not currently has a UI for Kubeflow, although we're working on that as well. And But KF Serving had a lot of really amazing features for 1.3. And to name a few, they released the, their V1 Beta 1 resource version, which first of all introduces two new model servers for PMML and LiveGDM model servers, as well as making it more easy to run Canary rollout and servers. Now you don't have to define different components for the Canary deployments. You just define one component, one predictor, and easily configure the, the Canary traffic and the necessary stuff. They also had a really an exciting feature about multi-modal multi serving, where now you don't have only one model per inferred server, but you can put a lot of models into the same inferred service slash pod. And this can actually is done to mitigate problems like the maximum number of pods someone would have, because if you would be deploying too many models, then maybe we could hit Kubernetes' limit about IPs and number of pods allowed per node. And last but not least, they're working in a version two of their of an abstraction of their uh, of a protocol, which aims to be an abstraction on top of different inference server inference servers, so that there is just one single API for people to do inference. And this will help both client and servers to be more portable. So all in all, this is the overview of the new features 1.3. There are certainly a lot of them, and there are a lot of new articles that I can also try to link, will also link in the description for you to look. We are really excited that we got so much stuff done for 1.3. We're always looking to hear your feedback and tell us what you think. So thank you very much for tuning in.